Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Adam Steele for Hot Pole Studios and joining me today is Ryan Bruce, otherwise known to the internet and the universe as Fluff. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. How are you? I am good. How are you? Dude, I am uh, I am excited and frightened at the same time. I'm about to go on tour uh, starting tomorrow, and uh, but I'm going to be gone for a while, which is going to be nice to get out of the house formally and, uh, you know, just doing that that pre-grind of like, okay, did I pack everything that I need to? Uh, do I have everything I need? Did I remember my toothbrush? Kind of mode. Oh, yes. 17 battery banks, <laughs> rechargeable everything. Dude, oh. yeah, it's it's funny. Like, uh, the prepping for tour literally looks like a, just a bunch of things charging. That's generally, <laughs> if you want to know what it's like to prep for a tour, just plug and charge a bunch of things all at the same time. Yeah, uh, I, I've done tours before. It's not fun. I mean, the tour is fun, <laughs> but the organization, right. not so much. Oh, man. No, no, but yes, I'm, no, I am very grateful and humbled to have you on the channel, sir. Uh, Thanks for having me. And I wanted to talk to our audience about your new course from Pro Mix Academy. <laughs> yeah, we have... Uh, uh, it's... I don't know. It's a... Uh, well, I guess uh, I, should, uh, I should tell you guys what it's called. Um, it's called the Creator's Guide to Recording and Mixing, and... Um, it's really, it's for creators as the, the title would imply, but, uh, because I think when I was learning this stuff and whenever I would go on YouTube, it's always dudes making records. And so it's always dudes like, you know, you got to spend, you got to spend four hours moving a microphone on a snare. And I was just like, but they're going to watch my stuff on an iPhone. Like, why does that? Like, that's. We're, we're doing two different things like you can treat it that way but like making content and making good sounding audio for youtube is not the same as making a record right it's just it's just not and uh so i don't know so i wouldn't i would hesitate to say it's it's a good enough it's a course about being good enough but it's about streamlining and kind of what you end up with is a template that you can just you know have for repeatability and as you go along and tweak things you can just make the template and you update the template, and so basically uh, your workflow is cut down significantly. If you are a creator or have a you know any kind of a demo thing, and you want to put your stuff out there quickly, that's how you do it. Absolutely, it is funny. It reminds me there was a, a an article that changed my life years ago uh, in filming rather than audio, and the title was "Nobody Cares About Your Bokeh," and it's like hang on, what? I've been trying to chase this thing for so long. And the, the gist of the nobody article cares. was, stop it. You're spending days doing the thing nobody cares about. <laughs> Do the thing that people care about. Have, have you ever noticed like the similarities between like, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and assume like you're somewhat of a camera nerd. Very much uh, so. Okay, I am too. But there's so many similarities between the camera world, the pro audio world, and the guitar world, and like I do, I get asked every single time I go on tour, "What rig are you going to use? Like, what what are you what are you going to use? Which uh, which amps? Because I have a pile of amps behind me." And I'm like, "I'm going to stick to using my Helix." And they're like, "Well, how? Why?" It's like, "Well, the audience doesn't care." Yeah, <laughs> the audience doesn't care what camera you use. They don't care what plugin you use, and they don't care. What what amplifier or what thing you use to make your ching 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 guitar sound? They yeah. Don't care. Yeah. So like, what is the focus of the thing <laughs> you're doing right now? And live, right. the focus of the thing you're doing is on the stage, making a noise, impressing the crowd. Right. Yep. The rest is just to to, to use a word. The rest is just fluff. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. It literally doesn't matter. So <laughs> but, it's easy. It's easy to get hung up on all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the the parallel in the camera world is like, there, there's the cliche of the, the camera nerd who's got the $50,000 red camera with all the nice lenses, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and just produces one short film every year or two. Right. And it's like, that's nice and all. You're never going to make a career out of this because you can't work to a schedule. <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, there is... Like, I'm, I'm not, well, like, when I say all that stuff that I just said, like, I'm not referring to also, like, the fun factor is very high on all that stuff. Guitars are fun. Camera stuff 
is so much fun and incredibly expensive, but camera stuff is so much fun. I knew a guy who uh, worked here locally at Microsoft and with his Christmas bonus one year, he went out and bought his first camera, which was a uh, a Red Epic at that time. First, first camera. Oh my first God. camera. First camera was a Red Epic <laughs> and his whole kit, he spent about 55,000 bucks. First camera. Jesus H. Christ. <laughs> I'm, I was I, just like, bro. Where do you go from there? That's, I, you know what? I don't think he had it for that long, to be honest with you. I mean, that's a separate question. When you hit... I mean, just, just as, as an aside for a minute, I would argue that like guys like us, like with the amp collections and all that kind of stuff, we're, we're kind of at the top of the tree in a way. Where do you go from there? Yeah. Where's the fun factor? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. But like, I don't know, like, because uh, you have black magic stuff. Now we're talking about camera nerd stuff. Sorry, guys. I apologize. We'll get back um, to the music stuff in a minute. We will. We'll, we'll circle back. This is going somewhere. But with like the red stuff, and like you use black magic stuff, like you can go too far, and then and then it becomes not practical, and then it becomes, you know, it's going to get in your way. Yeah. And so then you have to step back and take it down a couple of notches because like i could easily have a cinema camera but how would that help me having a giant camera and a rig that i can't hand hold and go on tour with and vlog with and all that kind of stuff so yeah it's about finding balance like anything yeah it, it's a funny thing for me that i kind of came into this sideways because i was working for a media company as a professional camera operator and that kind of thing Oh, wow. Which is how I ended up doing YouTube, because funnily enough, oh. I was watching uh, Glenn Fricker, Sound, uh, Spectre Sound Studios, mm -hmm. and you, and I was, oh, this you. is nine years ago, eight years ago, and I was like, I have the gear, I can do this, anybody can do this, this is easy, and then I start doing it, I'm like, this is actually really hard. <laughs> really tough, yeah. But I'm, <laughs> but I'm stubborn and stupid enough to keep going, which is why I'm, <laughs> why I'm here. But dude, that's I feel like I feel like learning anything in this kind of world, uh, you know, because people don't even think about half the stuff like they don't think about lighting and they don't think about, you know, uh, sh you know shutter angles or frame rates or like all this stuff. I always felt for years that like I was always constantly going, oh, I got to start learning that now, too. Like, I thought I could just point and do this. No. Nope. No, you have to learn like six other peripheral things in order to make that main thing better. Yeah, but that brings us back to what I was going to talk about originally, which is kind of the start of your channel, which wasn't like that. But then, no, neither was anybody else's at that point. Isn't, no, no. That's, uh -uh. that's the interesting thing for me is like, I remember watching some of the like Mesa amp with Blackstar cab videos way back in the day. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, dude. The uh, uh, good. So if you always, I always tell people if you have to pick one, uh, good sound, uh, good sound and not that great video, is way preferable to better video and worse sound. Yep. Uh, always. And I was always focused on the sound, so like the camera quality and all that kind of the production quality was never was never that high because like I'm not a production commercial studio like that just wasn't a thing then like you know we um you had guys like Ola sending up a single ca using his wife's photography camera mm. and just doing one angle Mero was doing the same thing Chappers was doing the same thing like mm. none of us had lights or anything like that wasn't do you remember at the time like at that point like Ola's videos were quite often just completely out of focus and yes. just like you'd see half of the amp and a blurry Ola in the background just going chug, chug, chug. But you'd be going, yep. damn, that sounds good. Who's this guy? Right. Right. His stuff sounded and still does sound incredible. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I just, I, I got this, the family Sony cyber shot and it didn't have a flip screen. So what I would do is I would put it to where I thought I would frame up correctly. I would track and make the video, take the camera down play it back in the camera and if i got it wrong i simply did it again oh. like that's that was the process my i mean i've been through similar processes you can see the screen behind me there 
Which is slick, by the I way. I know, I love it. Uh, but that saves me a lot of time because that's just a yes. feed from the camera. If we're doing a live stream, then I use it. But actually, right now, I'm just using it so I can turn around and go, am I in focus? Yep. <laughs> and it means that's that pretty good. I don't need to do it twice. It's, I mean, th because it's a big camera, it doesn't have a flip out. I could put a monitor on there, but by the time I've done that, it's like, uh, just more money and nobody's going to care. Because they... <laughs> Pe pe right. People don't see that side of it. I mean, if, oh. if if I did a panoramic view of the studio right now, I mean, this this shot looks kind of nice and crisp and clean. Mm -hmm. The rest of the studio is a fucking mess. <laughs> Just a bomb of cables and gear. Yep. Yeah. Open pelly cases, cardboard boxes, yep. all sorts of shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh -huh. people don't need to know that nah. until I tell them. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so you, you had just a channel that sounded good, and it got some traction. I remember there was a mixing and mastering video that you did in Reaper, funnily enough, which was, again, about eight years ago, long yeah. time ago. I'd been using Reaper for two or three years at that point, and I just started to build out this studio, like the, the skeleton. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like this is now. This is 10 years of building it up, right? But we had the right. space, and I was using Reaper because I liked it, and it was watching guys like Glenn and you using it, and I was suddenly going, well, if it's good enough for these guys, fuck Pro Tools. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> and, agree. Like, fuck Pro Tools. <laughs> and hate Pro Tools. for whatever reason, that really stuck with me and resonated with me. And a couple of years later, it turned out I had become, like, the Reaper guy. <laughs> and it's like... The Grand I'd, Wizard of Reaper. Did, didn't like mean to be. Like your magic wand and, like... Right? Yeah. <laughs> Just kind of happened. But then I, su I, mean, I suppose that's the same for all of us, is like what you're known for is like the riffs, beards, and gear. In a way, that just kind of happened. Right? Kind of. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Uh, I was just uh, having fun because I did that stuff. I was doing that stuff anyway. And I loved the process of editing video. To editing video is still the only reason why I still do YouTube. I swear to God. Like, I have an editor that does the stuff I don't want to do, like the FAQ Mondays, the Raider Roast, and the Reverb videos. But like the demo stuff, editing is where you can actually decide how creative and like the vision that you're going to have for your thing is going to take. And I love that part of like sitting there going, oh, I'm going to do this shot or look at that lighting or look at that grade or look at the saturation. I love that part. Um, but I just... Uh, the the evolution of the channel was not intentional at all uh it was just kind of a, a thing i was doing and oh i i can make it better so i'm gonna do i'm gonna do this thing to make it better i'm gonna upgrade my camera slowly i'm gonna get an actual key light i'm gonna get a better microphone but like everyone now thinks you have to have all this amazing stuff to even start and i just tell tell kids like nah dude just use your cell phone like yeah i mean the cell phones are so killer now Right? Like, if you got something like an <laughs> iPhone 12, which if you're a kid, you're more likely to have an iPhone 12 than me. <laughs> yep. True. <laughs> then with a couple of lights, you know, key lights that you can get off eBay for $100, $200. Golden, dude. Yeah, absolutely. And then it's down to, like, can you actually play and do you have some camera charisma? And those are things you just work on and start at a level and that gets better. Yep. Right. Uh, what? Why did you... So I'm sure there's been a couple of points where you've thought, hmm, should I stick with Reaper or should I move to something else? What's made you stick with Reaper this whole time? Right. Um, that's, I mean, you, you mean from the perspective of being the YouTube guy who does it or just for me personally? For you personally, because the, okay. I mean, that, that, what, cause in the context of evolution and changing and things and like your space started out differently, now yeah. you've built it all up, but the one constant is you haven't changed DAWs, or maybe you've tried other DAWs and not liked them or something like that, because for me, I'm always trying new stuff. Right. I mean, the, the DAW thing was a choice for me that was relatively early on, because I, I went to university to study music production, and this is like 15 years ago, right? So this mm. is when that was a whole new thing. Yeah. And I, it was such a new thing that the university I was at had like these multi-million dollar studios, the year before me, the entire year, the class was 40 people. My year was 100 people. Next year was 200 Whoa. people. 
So like, Damn. yeah, I was on that super early wave and they, they were Steinberg Cubase accredited and they had Pro Tools. And so I had to use both. I uh, always much preferred how Cubase worked, but at the time this is Cubase SX2, SX3, and there were certain things it couldn't do. Like you couldn't send audio from you know this bit to that bit to this bit to that bit. It could only go in a certain way, which their excuse was, oh, it's like, it's digital, there's going to be limitations. And then someone told me about Reaper, and it's like, yeah, it can do all this stuff. This is back on Reaper 3, so this is... I started out on 3.1. Wow. I think I started on, yeah, 3.6, 3.7-ish, somewhere around there. Uh, just, just What's, because it, what's it, it at now? What's that? What's it at now? 6.3 you know? something 6.34 <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow <laughs> okay anyway continue i apologize yeah. so i was playing with reaper uh yeah. i was very much enjoying it and a couple of years later uh we started or i joined our media company banter media and i originally joined as the sound guy so on film sets doing like uh, you know sound boom ops and that kind of yeah. thing and i found that reaper was really fast at doing film editing because i could just cut stuff out but then I, I, you know, I had clients in, they'd bring in Pro Tools sessions, it would make me want to scream, and I'd go back to Reaper. And over the years, Reaper had newer and newer features, cooler mm -hmm. stuff. I've grown with it, so I've seen things as basic as regions, which are like cycle markers in Cubase, you know, the kind of... That, yep. that wasn't there originally, and, no. but it wasn't there in any of them. And so I've noticed that the guys in Reaper, they'll either be first to market with a new feature... Or they'll yep. see another door go do a cool thing and they'll be like, huh, that's a cool thing. We'll have that. But then they'll look at another cool door thing and go, we'll have that too. And that, and that, and that, and right. that, and that. <laughs> so right. even if the argument isn't Reaper got there first, it's like, yeah, but they have it. <laughs> and so right. all these cool things that come out, they're all in there. And that's what's kept me is that like I've not had to pay any more and they get all these new cool things in there. And because it's one new cool little thing at a time, I can kind of drip feed it and add these new things into my workflow. So yeah. it's changed as I've changed. I keep going back to things like Cubase and they look the same. Pro Tools kind of looks the same. It's like, well, yeah, I've moved on. <laughs> the, I remember, uh, so with, uh, in, the er in the early days of Reaper, if you got stuck, it it wasn't popular enough to really Google anything yet, and your only hope was to either figure it out on your own or go to the forum and pray that someone would answer your question. Mm -hmm. And there were like there were like three dudes, three masters that would always spend the majority of their time answering forum questions. Mm -hmm. So I don't I'm sure it's changed by now. Uh but it was very, very limited. And that was the one thing that, uh, one of the reason why I left is because I was like, man, I got to get this done. I can't find an answer on how to do this. Oh, they call it a totally different. They don't call them plugins. They call them effects. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, but, I, yeah. I, I think I was kind of lucky in that way that I got through that difficult period because at that time we had a media company, but we were like 22, 23. We had no money. Uh, we were, like, and I mean, like, we spent all our money on a Canon 5D Mark II and mm -hmm. a nice couple of lenses, and that was it. We were broke. So it's like, right, we've got this big job. We need to do it now. If you can't find out what that's called, you're staying late tonight and finding out what the hell that's called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, Tough. So that's, that's <laughs> how I learned, is it wasn't a case of, oh, I'll just right. go and get Cubase. Or, it was like, no, you've done this in, this in this door. You're halfway through a project. It needs delivering at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Go. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It is extremely reliable. I know, I know super high-level front-of-house dudes that track their bands' sessions in Pro Tools from the board because it's like one of the only DAWs besides Logic maybe that doesn't that won't crash after two hours of continuous recording like it's super rock solid i do remember that so you said pro tools you mean pro tools or did you mean i meant reaper <laughs> no not pro tools no that use uh reaper yeah. to track their hours long sets and stuff like that so yeah i mean it's always been rock solid it's only when you throw in some rather 
yeah, you know, uh, let's let's say uh, less than legal plugins in there that it starts to get all crashy, sure. and that's certainly that thing's fault. Of course. Yeah. Of course. What? What, what can you do? What there? is the story? I, what is the story with three? Do you know anyone from Kukos? No, no, I don't. That's it's that's... it's funny because I believe that the other guys who are like known as the Reaper guys, like Kenny and John from the Reaper blog, I think they really do know the guys from Kokos, and I'm the guy who's like, hello, guys, guys. <laughs> kind of a mystery. I always picture those guys as like you know. The, like uh like the dudes is like sleep token or something like they have masks and hoods and like yeah they're like the guys in of reaper <laughs> i know who I one of them know. is uh justin because he was the guy who developed winamp back in the day if you remember right. Winamp, right i do winamp was awesome yeah it was and then they sold it to aol and made hundreds of millions of dollars and that that's right. another reason why i've always liked reaper because the, the guys who program it they're like we don't need the money we, we've got the money. We did the Winamp sold to AOL thing. We just program this because we, we like it and we think it's good. Right. And right, right. that's that thing that, that stuck with me over the years is that all the other companies, they're like, if we don't add new features, if we don't add a new version number, we won't make enough money. We won't be able to pay our staff, which is fair because business got a business. Sure. But the yep. guys at Reaper, they're, at Cocos, they're just like, eh, ready when it's ready. Ooh, a new feature. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta respect that. Love that. Yeah. That's cool. So, circling back to what we were talking about with uh, kind yeah. of the way that, that you kind of became the creator that you became, because um, my my story is similar but not the same. Um, you were doing, you know, picking up speed and doing things like beard files and FAQ Mondays. I remember when that was mm -hmm. new. I'm going to get my <laughs> Zimmer frame now. <laughs> so, so bad. The early ones were so bad. Yeah, but then my early stuff was really bad. I remember stuttering through half my early videos. Right, right, right. You're just going for it. Yeah, because you just you start and you're like, uh, 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 uh. right, <laughs> and then right. you don't do a retake. <laughs> no. But then, and this is the key point. There was a video that you put out that I remember the day it dropped because it it changed the way I thought. It was called Life Vlog. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Because that's not had that many views even now with people going back and watching old mm -hmm. videos. That for me was a key point, not just in what you were doing, but in what guitar YouTubers were doing. Because the the, the gist of it was, I mean, you, you'd hit a bad place. Yeah. And the the upshot, as as I took away from it, is I've got to do this full time now. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> big oh shit yeah i was flipping out i should i haven't actually uh i haven't gone back and watched that in a long long time probably since i put it out but uh i remember being absolutely mind numb because i just been fired that day and uh also got divorced three weeks prior i didn't tell anybody but what i think it did in retrospect though is it humanized me to the audience because when you're watching someone like do musical stuff you know they're they're being vulnerable but in a very specific way and i think up until that point the people that are watched my stuff didn't really necessarily know a ton about me like they knew some and i hadn't it's interesting to think that like i wasn't doing youtube full time then so like i was doing it as i had time in relation to my family life and my office job so that was when it got super serious for me. And like, suddenly I was scared to death of not being able to make my mortgage and I was going to be homeless. So I had better, I better just start making videos, man. Um, I don't know. I have not watched that video in a long, long time. So I, I should go back and watch it. I think it might be quite illuminating of how far things have come. But then having said that, I think things changed very quickly for you because um, yeah. from then, I mean, I'd been watching the videos, but I hadn't been like, you know, super invested, super fan or anything like that. Cause, sure. um, your videos, like a lot of people's were just a guy making videos on the internet and it was cool. Totally. But then that personal thing, you go, Oh, Oh wow. And then I, I, I remember that I was really waiting for each one to come out then. And I think the next one, you said that you'd had a call from Rob Chapman and he'd kind of really yeah. lifted your spirits. 
Yeah, which I, uh, in and of I itself was like, whoa, because Chappers, even then, was like the top dog. He was, yeah, yeah. And, and he had, I think it was a year prior, had gone through something very, very similar. And I saw him at one of his guitar tours. He was in Seattle, and he, and he was like, hey, you know, you got to come down. So me and, uh, me and Jared Dines went down and uh, said hi to him. And uh, he was like, it's going to be okay, mate. It's going to be all right. I trust me. Like I'm, I'm much further in the process than you are. It'll be just fine. You'll be just fine. And I was like, wow. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chappers. <laughs> like, I don't know. It was like this thing, like no, no one put it like he did. And it was just a, it was a, it was a very moment of clarity for me, I guess. Right. It's funny. I went full time doing this about a year ago. And if I, if someone had said something similar to me, earlier i think i would have done it earlier but i was terrified of not paying the bills and that kind of thing so i Dude. i was working like 16 18 hour days to make sure that i yep. could pay the bills but then when i went full time i realized yeah actually i can do this yeah but, but you gotta take that leap man you gotta, yeah. you gotta jump absolutely but have it, having that routine and the templates like you were saying that that whole thing i mean i'm guessing that's built up over the years incrementally bit by yeah. bit yeah, I, or did you have a moment at that point where you said, right, this is how I'm going to make all these videos, or was it just a mad scramble? No, no, it was a mad scramble. And then and then I think it was, uh, I, I have a, a good friend of mine, Jason, who's, uh, he's not a YouTuber, but uh, he's a brilliant musician and engineer techie guy. And it was him, I believe, that was like, you know, if you make that same thing over and over again, like, you know, like referring to like, I'm going to make a, a project for a, a demo song why don't you just make a template so then you can just open it straight up and i was like what <laughs> like it was mind-blowing what yeah just just take out all the audio but keep everything else that way you can just fill in the audio and then it's all routed and stuff and i was like oh my god <laughs> like so i used to start from scratch yeah every time for years right so so that was just like, oh man, that was just mind blowing for me. Right. It's funny. I still start from scratch every time with the audio, but I would not recommend that to anybody. I do that for the love of it and not because of any other reason. That's right. my thing. Like the camera for me now has like, I turn it on. It's like this setting, that setting, this setting, done, go. Microphone goes in, done. Template essentially. Done. Yep. Same thing. But yep. the audio for me is like, do what I say, not what I do, because that's my, that's my hobby, right? <laughs> it's baking. It's baking, but something from scratch. Right. But like, I, like, y y as far as I, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were a guitar player first who fell into doing the production thing. Totally. I'm, yeah, very much so. Yeah. I was more of a production guy first who fell into the, the music st stuff. I mean, I played a, a lot as a teenager and in my twenties, but production is me, right? <laughs> yeah. So f for yeah. me, doing that is like this. That that is what I love doing. But oh boy, don't don't do that. That's crazy talk. <laughs> don't do that, kids. Don't do that. It's yeah. Bad. It's but bad. yeah, it's it's funny. It was only a good couple of years after that that big leap that some videos went absolutely crazy. If you remember how big, huh. like the cheapest guitar on eBay, Amazon, those videos went poof. Yeah, so some of the, that's actually like some of my most viewed videos even to this day is uh, some of the Riff Wars, um, cheapest uh, guitar on Amazon, cheapest guitar on eBay, Wish, mm. all, that, but, all that kind of stuff. But isn't it funny how it's n it's not like you woke up one day and said, I'm going to make a million views from the cheapest guitar on Amazon. Nope. We can't predict what videos of ours are going to have big hits and which ones aren't. No, I was bored. I was just bored of what I was doing at the time. Uh, I was so burnt out and like, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to just be guitar demo guy. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get the, I don't know. I'm going to get the, what is the cheapest guitar on Amazon? Oh, there it is. Yeah, I'll check it out. Hmm. Like that's all it was. Like, I don't know. I, not too much thought got, went into it, unfortunately. <laughs> and yet. <laughs> <laughs> and yet it's funny what happens yeah. isn't it but yeah that that's the thing about being a creator for me is that i i set out to go right this week i'm making this video and that video if they do well great if they don't fine 
Yeah. You know, as as long as it doesn't turn out to be a complete bag of trash, if it's like if it's a video that I'm happy with, but it doesn't go like, too far. Some of the videos that I make are super nerdy and super niche, and that's okay. You know, love that because I'm making the videos I want to make. Right. And if they happen to resonate with people, great. It yeah is it, it, would you say that works for you? Yeah, I always tell people just do what you're passionate about. I don't care what it is. Like if you're really super, like I'm sure there's stamp collecting channels and I'm sure there's all sorts of stuff. Like just, just be what you're passionate about. Like that's all. Just, just be real. That's all. Yeah. Just do what you're into. I don't know if you do this, but this is something I do that um, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, not necessarily concentrate on them, but they'll be there. Like while I'm working on something else, or if I'm washing the dishes or something, mm -hmm. YouTube's on for me. Uh, and it could be anything, because like I've seen all the guitar YouTubers at this point. I'm bored of it. Um, Same. But like the last few weeks, I've been watching ForgottenWeapons.com and watching all their crazy gun stuff. I'm in the UK. Mm -hmm. We can't even have guns. <laughs> right. But th that guy's passionate about his thing. I've been right. watching speedrunners play games that are meant to be like 40 hour games in 40 yeah, minutes. Yeah, same. Same old NES speedruns of like Mario 3 and Zelda and like, yeah. Same, right? I'll watch those. Because those guys are passionate and some of them like yeah. their camera work is terrible. But as long as you can hear yeah. them clearly and they're doing the thing. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I, I've been into car videos and like watching uh, Donut the Donut Media channel and like all sorts of like car related or fabrication, welding. Uh, woodworking, just, I don't know, just whatever. It's funny, it's I've been watching fine. some of the Donut Media Group stuff recently, and I drive a Skoda, so, like, I'm not their target audience. <laughs> no, but still, I love the passion. <laughs> right, and that, that's it. what it boils down to. Yeah. Okay, yeah, totally. so, before we wrap this up, I'm going to throw my pen, and I've got a few questions that my lovely viewers wanted to put to you, if that's all right. Yes, sir. Okay, so let's start with the gear stuff because uh, we can blow through that and then get to the interesting non-gear okay. stuff. So gear stuff, uh, Alcoustic says, what do you think are the best pickups for metal? That is such a broad question. That's like, what's the best car for racing? Uh, yeah. For me, I like, uh, so if it is going to be metal and if it is going to be high gain, I like the Fishman stuff because... Uh, the Fishman stuff has a clarity in their construction that a normal passive pickup cannot have. It's not possible. Yeah. But the trade-off is non-high gain tones are going to be sometimes too high def sounding. There's there's too much information and there's too much clarity in a semi-dirty or clean tone. Right. Uh, potentially on the setup. It's, all, it's me, all tools in the box, isn't it, right? Like, yeah. For for me, the yeah. fluent stuff, I love the fluent stuff. Uh, Ken Susie sent me some pickups recently to do a video on. And the Devon Townsend ones just hit like a sledgehammer. Love the Devons. Um, I have, I'm uh, going to be touring with uh, a set of my prototype signature uh, Fishmans. Ooh. They're going to be uh, coming out. But uh, the, for me, the Fishman stuff is like, eh, I'm done searching for pickups. This is, this is it. It's so. funny, you've had signature series in the past. And if this is what you've settled on, then ooh, that's, that's going to... They're killer. They're killer. You'll see. Awesome. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, so another question from Al. Uh, are there any alternate tunings you're going to be taking on tour? Is there anything you play with or are you a straight ahead kind of guy? No, we're uh, we're basically drop D for, I think, uh, for this set, one song, uh, and then drop C sharp for the whole set. Fair but enough. That'll, that'll change once the second record comes out. Ah. Which is done. <laughs> thank God. Awesome. So is that is that just in like mixing or is that in the press release stage or is that no it's in uh it's being mixed right so it's going to be a little while before we hear that cool yeah we don't we don't want to put it out until we uh tour the new song a new song actually does come out tomorrow when we're filming this it, it comes out tomorrow so i'll be releasing this next week so you will have seen the new single by that point yes awesome yes, yes. yes. um i'm guessing that gives you a chance to kind of get a feel for the new songs on the tour so that's something a lot of bands have done for years and years, actually play them out live, right? Yeah, we're going to play just this one. Uh, we're not going to play any of the other stuff off the, the unreleased record okay. yet, but there'll be future tours where we start playing that stuff. 
please tell me that the new record doesn't sound like that new Guns N' Roses single. <laughs> but it, well, no, it has that vocal effect throughout the whole thing. <laughs> All super distorted, megaphone. Yeah, whole thing, whole record. Sweet. Cool. Uh, question from my friend Scott. Um, if you had to choose between a dual or triple rectifier, why would it be an Engel Savage? <laughs> mm, first of all, it wouldn't be an Engel Savage. <laughs> That's Scott um, from Chernobyl Studios. So. Oh. <laughs> no, it's funny he brought up the point of uh, Rammstein. It's like basically makes dual rectifiers sound like Engels. And I was like, wow, yeah, you are right about that. Yep, they're a, they're a funny one, Rammstein. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> Scott just being a jerk. Thanks, Scott. And uh, last gear question. Um, is there any particular piece of gear over the years that has just surprised you about either how good it was or how bad it was that you didn't expect? Um, there was a couple. The, fish, the initial Fishman stuff, uh, when Fluence first became a thing, I think it was five, six years ago now, um, I was so burnt out at that point. Ken Susi was like, is an actual like old friend of mine. He was in town with Unearth, and uh, he was like, "You got to try like these new pickups I'm I'm working with." And I was like, "I don't care, I don't care." Like, yeah, oh yeah, they're gonna have like high end and low end and all whoopity do. <laughs> and uh, and he came over to my house and he was like, "Dial in the best tone that you have with the best stuff that you have with your stuff." And I was like, "Okay." And I dialed in just like this crazy metal tone with like a. I think it was a Hughes and Kettner Triamp, or maybe it was a Rectifier or something. I can't really remember. And I had my RD with some custom pickups, and like it sounded really good. And he plugged in this three hundred dollar Hagstrom with Fishman, some prototype Fishman fluence in them. And I was just, I was so mad at him because uh, they sounded, they sounded like the voice of God just breathing on you. <laughs> and uh, I was like, damn, I. I'm not mad at that. That's really that, I was I was shocked to say the least. But uh, yeah, the Fishman stuff, um, the Peppers pedals Dirty Tree boost. I was shocked, dude. That's that's the greatest boost pedal for a rectifier ever made. Yeah, it's really good. I I it's bought this really because good. of your shout out, and you were you were not wrong. It's. It's proper brilliant, as they say. Yes. Really, I, really good. I also ended up with the Donna Softgate, funnily enough. Dude, <laughs> that's another one. I I plugged that in, and I couldn't believe what I... I was like, wow. Yeah, so those are the three that have just shocked me. Like, legit shocked me. Good stuff. Anything bad? I mean, that, that was really built up with hype and was just like, hmm. Um, back in the day, some of the Randall amps were mm. like super mega hyped, but that has nothing to, that has less to do with like the amp designs and more to do with the gap between a prototype and a production amplifier. Right. It's so, so like the production amplifiers of like the Thrasher sounded nothing like, like the prototype hand wired Mike Fortin made Thrashers. Right. I mean, I suppose as our resident Mesa nerd knows that amps go through changes. They sure do. And uh, some of the Randall stuff back in the day, like five, six, seven, eight years ago, was not great. Although everyone was hyping them up. Um, I don't know. It, more so that happens with pedals a lot. Like I'll get a pedal. I'll just like, okay. Um, the Plumes is a cool pedal. I enjoy the Earthquaker plumes but i feel like that was hyped just because it was 99 bucks yeah i like the plumes a lot uh but it filled in a very specific need for me yes i i, I use it in front of uh, a marshall jmp instead of a classic M tube screamer much much more appropriate use and it also just the, the difference between that and a, a ts9 is the ts9 goes <laughs> and the plumes right. doesn't and that's like right done <laughs> yeah yeah but that was the the one i was just like but I still like it. I still have it. I didn't get rid of it or anything, but... Yeah, yeah, but that's exactly like that. I got the plumes. I was thinking, this is the last Troop Screamer I will ever need. No, it's not. And then I end up buying things like the Dirty Tree. It's like, oh, well, uh, obviously that yeah. didn't fill that need. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Right. So, yeah, okay. Uh, one, uh, uh, that's the gear questions done. Now onto the actual interesting stuff. Okay. Uh, question from my mod on Discord, Marty, was uh, how does Fluff handle his people network besides email and phone contacts? I mean, you know so many people. How do you keep track? Is there anything you use, like an app or just a notebook? No. no. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't. Just emails and uh, texts and uh, Facebook Messenger. Uh, mm -hmm. is Facebook Messenger I heavily rely on for lots of professional stuff, lots of just... But yeah, otherwise, I don't. It's funny, isn't it, that like uh, over the years I've become very similar with that, that like my best friend and business partner, Liam, is like, you, you can't use Facebook Messenger for business stuff. I'm like, watch me. <laughs> this is yes, how everyone can. seems to do it in the guitar yes. world. So, yes, fine. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I sent invoices through Facebook Messenger. <laughs> I did it this morning. Like, whatever. It's fine. You do what you gotta do, don't you? That's right. That's right. Totally. Cool. So this is a question that me and Liam have asked to every well-known person that we've ever interviewed. I got to ask this to Tom DeLong once. Um, if you could be any animal with any superpower, what would it be? Uh, I would be... Uh, any animal man i would be a shark with lasers awesome <laughs> shark nothing with wrong lasers. with a shark with lasers <laughs> what, did, yeah, what did tom maybe. say what was his answer uh his was uh if i remember rightly it was a sheep that could fly i i thought about flying as well because flying is like who do, who wouldn't want to fly it's kind of a go-to, isn't it? I mean, the other one that I would be is like an invisible T-Rex. <laughs> just like, ooh, that's pretty good too. <laughs> just, just random cars just crushing. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. So, two more questions. One from uh, Danny in our Discord. Uh, what piece of not gear, not guitar gear, but what one thing could you not live without? Um, honestly, I just got it, uh, I think two weeks ago and it's totally transformed how fast I'm able to work and edit video. Uh, my Elgato stream deck. Ooh, yes. Which I see you have right behind you. I do. I use that. Um, I actually put that in my bag and it travels with me. Yeah. So I, uh, I was editing, I was, you know, I'm trying to bank as many videos as possible, but before I leave, I shot, uh, I shot 10 videos over the course of three days and I edited five of them three days while my lady was gone on a trip so like i just had the house to myself it's me and the dogs and i actually got like a slight uh i don't know like a really early development uh repetitive stress injury in my uh forearm from Ooh. doing keyboard shortcut commands like the three button control b c and all that stuff right and uh i went to bed one night and i was just like that's i should i should pay attention to that i shouldn't brush that off and uh I was looking for options and all my friends were just like, get the stream deck, idiot. <laughs> and uh, I, I hadn't, I hadn't quite wrapped my head around what it, what it could do until I got it. And I was like, oh, but it's, that's, I couldn't live without it. I need to work with it more actually, because I don't use it for editing at all. I use it for live streaming. Um, Dude, you're missing out if you're not using it for editing or recording. I mean, I've gone the other way. Like, I've gone through about 10 different keyboards for, for editing to find the one that doesn't hurt. I use that a lot when I'm with John Brown because I, I switch all his cameras and stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, and he's got like a crazy Blackmagic camera switcher. So from the stream deck, I'm not having to use a mouse. I can just change scenes and change cameras with one hand. Great. Yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah, so, highly yeah, recommend it. I just need to do more of that for editing. Last question yeah. is um, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Yes, absolutely all day. Yes, please. Yes, absolutely. Anyone who says no, fight me. <laughs> yeah, dude. Let's arm wrestle. I swear <laughs> to God. I mean, ham and pineapple, perfect combo. Salty, sweet. Yes. Dude, yes. Exactly right. And Agree. A, a really good pizza cheese is quite salty as well, so it needs that little mm -hmm. lift. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not all just nerdy gear questions. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about pizza. I'm down. Oh, now I want pizza. It's like 11 p.m. Yeah. and I want a pizza. Oh, man. I wouldn't mind pizza either. Oh. 
Well, I'll leave you with that thought. So everybody check out the link in the description for Fluff's creator course. If you're interested in becoming a, a content creator, whether it be YouTube or something newer, like what the, the, the kids use, like TikTok, that kind of thing. I don't use TikTok. I feel old. But Yeah, same. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, check that out. Link is in the description because there's going to be a lot of stuff in there that is going to help you to get where you're going a lot faster. Because believe me, if it was there when I started, I would have got it because it probably would have shaved years off where my kind of subscriber number was flat, 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 flat. And finally, yeah. I got the hang of it. If if I'd had some advice of like, look, do this, do this, don't do this, probably would have been a lot sooner. So yeah, if that sounds Max. like a thing for you, go grab it. Dude, thank you so much for having me, man. really appreciate it. Anytime. Thank you for coming on. It's uh, very much appreciated. Anytime, dude. Let's do it again. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Cheers. Hey everyone, that might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server. Link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hot Pole Studios. See you there.